All right, guys, are all coil cleaners made the same? No, they're not. And there's a reason why we got John Pastorello on the podcast for part two. He's going to talk about coil cleaning and aluminum fins and microchannel safe and all that kind of stuff and why water is corrosive to aluminum and why they put a special inhibitor in their coil cleaners. So when you're rinsing the coil cleaner off, that inhibitor prevents the water corrosion of the aluminum fins. Pretty interesting stuff. So this is part two with John Pastorello from Refrigeration Technologies. This is the HVAC Know-It-All podcast. I'm your host, Gary McCready. This podcast is sponsored by Cool Air Products, Master, Cintas, and SupplyHouse.com. Go to the show notes and click on the links to check these guys out. Can I make a statement and you tell me if this has any weight to it? The, the water-only statement on, on the OEM's condenser coil is basically a blanket statement because they don't particularly trust that the technician is going to use the correct type of cleaner on it. So basically they're covering their ass by saying don't use any coil cleaner because somebody might come along and use something very acidic that starts eating away at a coil. Is that is that a fair statement? Oh yeah, I think what they're what they're really afraid of is that technicians out there are going to use brighteners and that's certainly not the way to go. Okay. Um, and they didn't really dive into the more passive cleaners like what we use that don't harm any services. And we have corrosion and protection in our coil cleaners. So you have to rinse it with tap water after you're done cleaning the coil. And, but we have a, a corrosion inhibitors in the coil cleaner that will keep the water, your rinse water, from causing further corrosion. Interesting. Yeah. So you brought up the fact, because that's where I was, I was going to ask you that in a few minutes, because you brought up water being corrosive. Yes. To a coil. And I was going to ask you in a few minutes, how do we rinse coil cleaner off a coil if the water is corrosive? And you've just answered the question. We have inhibitors in some of the coil cleaners you use that prevent the corrosion from the water. Is that, is that right? Is that what you're saying? Yes, because... Interesting. Oh, your coil is going to be aluminum, at least aluminum fin. Yeah. You don't find faucets made out of aluminum. Why? Because tap water will corrode it. Interesting. Yeah. So you've got a bunch of different coil cleaners. And I mean, the, the Venom packs are great because they're concentrated and you can mix whatever you want into whatever concentration you need for that specific job. But what what cleaners, is it all of your cleaners that have this inhibitor, corrosion inhibitor in it? Or is it only oh, a definitely. few? definitely. I think we're the only ones that use a rinse aid. So the just like the jet dry you'd use in your uh, dishwasher, we use a rinse aid so that the detergent will sheet right off and not leave any uh, hard water deposits behind. And then there's going to be some corrosion inhibitor to coat that aluminum and copper. So when they go to rinse with water, um, they're not going to have any corrosion effect after effect. Okay. So even in, because you do have a brightener as well. Like it's a, it's yes. a high... So it, it like it's you, you would only use a brightener in cases where you have a really, really soiled plugged coil or something like that, right? Yeah, we, we'd say only in extreme cases. I mean, there's a need for it. If you're doing restaurants and uh, all your rooftop units or condensers are just plugged with uh, grease, I see no need for ever using a brightener in a residential setting. Yeah. Basically just commercial settings. And it's really should only be used 10% of the time. Mm -hmm. Most coils are just dusty and, you know, maybe some good buildup of soil. Um, yeah, natural, natural airborne debris, stuff like exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, you can be in an industrial area where you have a lot of particulates, a lot of air quality issues, uh, exhaust being sucked into uh, the coil. The reason I asked you about the bright, the brightener is does the brightener have the, uh, the inhibitor as well to prevent corrosion from the water? No, because no, no, no. That's why I asked because I thought, cause that's almost like a different animal on its own, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't remove aluminum cause that's what brighteners and acids do. Acids and really alkaline. It cleans by removing aluminum. And I mean, 
you possibly could go in afterward and use a corrosion protection in your rinse. Okay, but, yeah, that, uh, that yeah. could be done too, yeah. So so you're saying the way the brightener works is it actually removes a layer of the aluminum and that's oh, why it gets so bright? Yeah? Yeah. Interesting. But when I was growing up, and this is, goes way back, but we used to have to wash walls in uh -huh. our bathrooms and kitchens. It was kind yeah. of like, you know, every six months, we got to wash the walls. <laughs> well, when you wash the walls, all it did was remove a little layer of paint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't know, for some reason, but... Was it lead paint back the then, grocery, too? <laughs> yeah. There were the spick and span and all this stuff for washing walls. People used it religiously. Yeah. And, of course... They also use floor wax. You you wanted to wax your floors in the kitchen, and the and the bathrooms, and uh, to make them shiny. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know you don't see those products around anymore. And it's kind of like the same analogy with coils. People want bright coils. People want shiny floors. But they don't realize what they're doing when they're washing their walls is they're removing paint. That's how they get it clean. Okay, so then let's let's move away from the brightener for a minute because, sure. for instance, let's go to the the micro channel safe cleaner that you have. Sure. Okay, so there's obviously a, a pH level of that cleaner, but to my understanding, it's not on the acidic side of things. Correct? No, or, no. It... Um, people can confuse uh, a relatively. You know, you think you have to use a cleaner in the range of seven to eight, but you can go really as high as eleven on your pH of a cleaner as long as there's corrosion inhibitors in there. So, you know, it's only when you get to the extreme pHs of 13, 14 uh, that you have to worry. Okay. Because neutral, so, uh, neutral cleaners really are not effective. They're not high-performance cleaners. Um, they're just very, very mild cleaners. They only remo remove a lot of surface. They don't remove soil that's embedded. Okay. All right. Now, I, I mean, I brought up the micro channel because that is, seems to be the misconception amongst a lot of people online with all the comments is that you shouldn't be cleaning micro channel coils with any type of chemical whatsoever. Yes. Now your, yours is formulated specifically. Tell us how a micro channel coil cleaner is a little bit different from any other coil cleaner. What, what is different to say it's microchannel safe rather because are all your coil cleaners microchannel safe or do you do have specific one for microchannel cleaners? No, let's, everything let's maybe is, talk about that. Everything we make is is uh, aluminum safe. That's everything is aluminum safe. Yeah, okay. except the brightener. Except the brightener. Yes. All right. So the pH scale you're saying for the aluminum safe stuff is seven to eight and it's got the corrosion inhibitor in it. Yeah, actually, we're up more of the 9 to 10 on the pH. 9 to 10? That doesn't matter. Okay. Um, the more effective corrosion inhibitors attach better and last longer at the higher pHs. Interesting. So as we're okay. applying cleaner, we're also applying corrosion inhibitor, and we want that corrosion inhibitor to uh, bond to the metal. And that's only done by getting uh, the pH up there around the 10 range. Okay, this is exactly why I wanted to talk to you to get into the science of all this stuff. So moral of the story is water is corrosive. We can use a coil cleaner that is on the alkaline side, you said eight to 10 with corrosion inhibitors. And that's why we can get away with cleaning uh, aluminum coils with, with chemical and sure. not corrode it with, with the water after. So let's switch to evaporators because you have a evaporator cleaners and how are they different from a condenser cleaner is are they very similar or is there what's the differences involved to say this one's for an evaporator and that one's for a condenser they they are very similar um, okay it's really indistinguishable because they're made from essentially the same detergents people say well condenser gets a different soil than an evaporator but that's not true they're both sucking in the same air Mm -hmm. Same air from the environment, whether it's outdoor or indoor. The outdoor air comes indoors. It's going to be the same. Uh, maybe you're going to pick up more carpet fibers and that kind of stuff on your, um, or dog hairs. Yeah, on, pet, on your pet dander and all that clothes. kind of stuff. But 
Removing it is the same process. We went with our evaporator coil cleaner. Uh, we went with using detergent and built it with enzymes. And that was basically so we can get rid of the biofilms that may form in the indoor coil. And, uh, yeah. and the, the biofilms are basically coming from what? Like, what are they coming from? And, and why is the enzymes there? Any type of there? growth, any microbial growth you got going on in there. And I'm sure, you know, in your human areas, you know, it's just profuse, man. It's everywhere. If you live in the desert like Arizona, you don't have to worry about bugs growing on your coils, uh, indoor coils. It's just too dry. They can't survive. I, I mean, so let's switch it to to degreasing because degreasing is something that is important to any kitchen equipment that I've come across in the past has had some level of grease. Now, I know your coil cleaner in a can, the red can of Viper coil cleaner, that's not a brightener, right? Let's let's just talk about that for a minute. Is it a brightener or is it not a brightener? Oh, no, it's not a brightener. It's aluminum safe. It's aluminum safe. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because I, I've used it a ton of times. I've actually, you can tell me what you think about this. I've used that stuff on a kitchen evaporator. I've sprayed it on. I've let it, obviously, it's going to drip down and mix you're going to have a bit of a, a pooling of the coil cleaner as it starts to go from its foam into its sort of liquid form and drips. But I've never, ever, ever rinsed that stuff off with water. Never. And I've never come back and seen any sort of issues with it. So this this is a bit of an experiment on my end, but I think in the, the instructions it says rinsing is is not needed or it's optional. There, there is something about that in there, is there not? Yes, you got to look at, yeah, we actually have to read read the instructions. Of course. Evaporator, <laughs> the evaporator uh, is going to be dependent on um, condensation for the rinse. A condenser, you need to rinse it. You need to, because I haven't. Yes, been we thought my that was common sense. Everybody would think that you could, once you apply a foamy mm. detergent on, you need to rinse that condenser. But the evaporator, it's going to self rinse with the condensate. Um, I agree. I agree there. It, it just just from just from a standpoint of me not rinsing the condensers and not seeing issues years down the road, because when I worked for a contractor, it was my buildings and I just rotated through them on a yearly basis, making sure that the maintenance was done and all the repairs were finished. And I could see three, four years down the road, uh, a coil that I've cleaned with your Viper coil cleaner, that there's no visual corrosion happening, at least, because I've never... I've never rinsed them just because it, when you're in the middle of a warehouse and you've cleaned a coil, you really don't have access to water or I guess you could figure it out in some way or form, but I've just done it and left it just to see what happens. So give me your thoughts on leaving it on. Okay. First of all, leaving it on about half the cleaning job is done as you rinse with water because the detergents will break down and loosen the soil, but Correct. then you need the rinse water that carry the soil away. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. But because I haven't rinsed them, am I going to get scolded <laughs> from you on on that? Because I literally have not rinsed any of the condensers. And it's I'm usually, I'm talking about small condensers from small condensing units that are like packed inside of a reach-in freezer or cooler or something like that. Yeah, no, it, it'll eventually, it'll go through a process known as blister and lift. Okay. Because um, the it, it, if you can think of uh, it, just just blistering, uh, separating away from the metal, and fine flakes will just dissipate. Okay. So there's no real danger to the actual coil or fins. No, but I'd say you know just for the sake of um, carrying that dirt away and off, rinse with water. Okay. Perfect. All right. Um, I mean. As far as coil cleaners go, we've talked about pH levels and inhibitors and stuff like that. Is there anything else you think is important for someone that's going to clean an evaporator or a condenser before or after using a chemical? Well, um, if you spend 10 minutes on cleaning a coil, it's probably not going to get as clean as if you spent 20 minutes on cleaning the coil. Okay. okay? If you just go in there and just do a quick one application don't let it sit in there and let the detergent do its work, you know, and rinse it off real quick. It's not going to come as clean as uh, allowing the detergent to sit on that coil 
what we call dwell time mm -hmm. uh, to where it can uh, detergent has a chance to work it so it can break the bond between the surface and the soil yep allow you to rinse it off the longer the longer you soak your pots and pans in soapy water the cleaner they get and the easier it is to remove the soils so we we like we like to see a, a good dwell time of at least five minutes five minutes with the cleaner on it okay perfect cool well john this is um i've talked to you about coil cleaning before i think i've talked to you about coil coating before but every time i do we learn something new and and it's the ph levels i didn't i don't think i knew about the water being corrosive and i don't think i knew about the corrosive inhibitor that goes into the the chemical so that that was very cool so yeah for that i thank you very much for your time today john uh, okay